In this video, I'm going to talk about nerve cells and nerve, nervous tissue. This is a continuation of a previous video that I did called, called Nervous System Overview of Nervous Tissue. In that video, I talked about the structural, function, uh, structural and functional classifications of nervous tissue, and I went into the CNS and the peripheral nervous system. We talked about somatic and autonomic and parasympathetic and sympathetic. I'm going to do videos that go in greater detail with these, but now we want to talk about the, the cells that are actually making it possible and the tissue that's making all of this possible. All right. Roger by Curious Moran, man. So let's jump over here. All right. So in this video, I want to make sure I talk about the functional properties of neurons. We'll talk about their structure, their function. Then after going back and looking at those other pictures and linking it to a, a cell response, we'll look at, um, or a a response in general. Uh, we'll look at the receptors, we'll look, and then we'll come back and hopefully have time to do talk about the neuroglia, the nuclei, the tracts and nerves, and what is the difference between those. So in the previous video, I used this chart. I'm going to keep using this chart. Now, I overly emphasize the word afferent. I'd say afferent, but I'm not going to do that this time. That was just something I do in class so the students know this. The afferent is the sensory and the efferent, the afferent efferent is the motor response. And by the time we're done, in the last video, I did a little thing where we traced it and went all the way down to a somatic or autonomic response. Well, we'll do the same thing, and now we'll talk, we'll identify the neurons that are involved in this, in this process. There's actually a certain neuron that's going to be involved here. There's a connection part once we're in the central nervous system. And then, so we're getting information in the, uh, the peripheral nervous system, we're processing it, and then we're responding in the peripheral, with a peripheral nervous system uh, response, and then we would have our targeted cells, which are the skeletal muscles if it's autonomic, or the autonomic, which would be smooth muscle, cardiac, or glands, whether it's, and it could be either one of these two. So here's a, let's talk about a, ne a neuron. We've got three distinct parts. We've got the cell body, and there's the dendrite, and then there's the axon. Now, in the axon has a part right here called axon terminal. This is the part that is going to interact with the next cell. And actually, that communication is called a synapse. The space is called a synapse, but we'll get into that later. So there's a picture of the body, the, the, the dendrite, the axon. So here's, so what's happening is you're having, I'm just going to write S. S means stimulus. So stimulus is hitting and being picked up by the dendrites. And then it's, the, it's going to kind of, all this is going to hub. And if there's enough of a stimulus, it's going to cause a depolarization of this axon. That's called an action potential. And that's one of the things that it says up here. Uh, neuron is a cell that specializes in conducting action potentials or impulses. So it's going to run in this direction. So this is the axon. And there's the, part, the axon terminal is a part of, the, of a neuron that interacts with another. Now, there's a whole slew of stuff that's going on here. And watch my synapse video on that. So, all right, so back to the three parts. There's three distinct types of neurons. Now, my next picture is, I think I flipped these two, but you'll notice something about these. You see, all right, so let's, here's your cell body. Here's your cell body. Here's your cell body. That's supposed to be a B. Okay, dendrite. Dendrite, dendrite, axon, well, this is written really poorly here, axon, axon, terminal is what I really should say. <laughs> all right, and then this, this is really your axon going all the way. This looks very similar to this. This is a what's called a multipolar neuron. You have a unipolar neuron and a bipolar neuron. In class, I usually put this handout. I give this as a handout. We label it. You'll notice the unipolar and the bipolar switch places from this picture, but that's okay. Let's move down to here. Now, if you need to pause the video for a second, I would do so. One of the things I want to do is show you what are the um, structural classification of the neurons, as it says here, the processes. What makes this multipolar? You look at the cell body. All right. These branching off, these tendrils, or these pro they're also called a process. Multipolar has several processes on the cell body. And then there's the axon. And now I labeled axon, but it's all the way across. Um, you, have, uh, you have many dendrites 
and one axon. This is the this is a motor and an inner neuron, and it's also called an association neuron. So multipolar is going to be your motor. This is the one that's going to be your response. This is the big one down here. Your unipolar is going to be your the lights went out. Okay. The unipolar is going to be the one that is part of your sensory. So you notice we have it labeled sensory here. And you've noticed it's, the, it's got the dendrites here in the peripheral nervous system. And then the branching in, is going to be in the central nervous system. All right? So the axon is, and is going to be in the central nervous system. It's going to be a connecting with the you know, spinal cord or the brain. And we're going to talk about tracks and all of that. So there's the cell body. The bipolar one is a specialized one. It's got the cell body that's kind of like, if you see it's continuous with the dendrite, the cell body, and the axon. Notice the cell body is this kind of part that pops up here. And then you'll have, this is a, you'll have special ones called rods and cones in the eyes for or the vision and olfactory. But I'm going to spend most of my time talking about multipolar and uh, unipolar. So let's just kind of look at some of the other text here. So, the afferent neurons, the unipolar ones, right? These are th receptors either in the somatic, meaning like the outside, the skin, the muscles, or the visceral. This is your internal organs. They both are sensory. Okay. So if you go back to here, these are. This would be unipolar here. That's a, supposed to be a U. So these would be unipolar neurons going here. So that means I should draw a little cell body. And this would be my dendrite. That's written really bad there. And then that would be your axon. That I can't draw with my mouse. That's axon terminal. Okay? This is supposed to be a cell body. All right. Okay. Now, so copy this over here. The same thing's going on here. Now, the motor neurons are going to be multipolar. And they're efferent neurons. So now we're going back, we're adding, if we go back up to here, you would, it says a motor inner. Now you would call this what? You would call this an efferent neuron. You'd call this an afferent neuron. And that's some of the things we write in class, so I'm not going to do it here. So then what you would have here would be, let's draw a cell body with all these processes coming off it. CV. So this would be your dendrite. And then this is your axon, and this is your axon terminal. That's supposed to say AT. So that imagine all that coming here. You would also see it here. You'd see it in the in, as an interneuron. So let's kind of so these motor neurons. So somatic and uh, motor neurons back to here. That means they're going to be interacting whether it's autonomic and it's here or somatic. So they're all, um, that's basically part of the peripheral nervous system. So that's going to be a skeletal response or muscle, you know, muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac, or glands. Okay, and this is just what this is showing. So this would be the multipolar. This would be a synapse. This would be one neuron touching another. Eventually, this last one is touching this, which might be, this would be somatic, and this would be autonomic. All right, so let's... So interneurons are a connector. So what I want to do is, I don't want to make this video too long, but I want, I want to kind of go pick up the pace a little and kind of add in this. So if this were my class, I would slow down and explain this, but let's take a look. All right, so this is, uh, so this would be a uh, motor response, but this would be the afferent part. This is going to be the somatic. So say this, this could be a muscle. Notice this is a Look at this is the uh, dendrites. There's the cell body. This is the axon terminal. So this would be an afferent, a afferent neuron. This would be an accessory or a interneuron, or it's also multipolar. This would be multipolar. So this would be your efferent one, which is going to touch the muscle. So this is going to stimulate this muscle to to move. All right. If you want to pause that, go ahead and do so. All right. Let's. Go back to, let's just take another look at, at this. This is very similar to what you saw. So you got your dendrites, your afferent. Notice the dendrite is, called, is, is it part of the peripheral nervous system. Notice the axon, the, or the, so the dendrite going over to 
the central body, all right? And then you also have this motor neuron as part of the peripher peripheral nervous system. So this is sensory afferent. This would be the um, this is would be motor. So muscles, glands. I could also um, add in uh, that's smooth muscles. All right. Hmm. We need to look at some other aspects here, and there are some support cells, all right? And the reason why I put this, this is what I handwrite in class, but what I do is I kind of add in some details for them. So we, we kind of look at this, like it is, this could be within a sensory organ, or it could if it, or it could be, this is a sensory organ that could detect. It could be, um, it could be somatic, or it could be visceral. Okay, so there's your A, here's your cell body, here's your axon here, okay? This would be the, the spinal cord. So what's going to happen is information is going up, going from the inferior going up superior to ultimately to the brain. And we, call, we would call these columns, right? And then information is coming back telling it, hey, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. And there's your interneuron. Think about this. Motor is away from the CNS. So here's the CNS, the spinal cord, away right there. Okay. Now... Um, let's go ahead and talk about the support cells, and that is what we call the glia cells or the neuroglia cells, and we'll hopefully finish up with this. All right, so um, I'm going to go through this rather quickly, let you kind of pause. There are six distinct cells that are not neurons, but are support cells. They're called neuroglial cells. We've got astrocytes. We've got microglial cells. We've got oligodendrites or oligodendrites. We've got epididymal cells. We have uh, satellite uh, sensor. We see things called satellite cells and swan cells. Swan cells form myelin, so that's where we're going to get our myelin sheaf. We're going to get the oligodendrite and the swan have a very similar function. So one is in the peripheral, these two down here, and the and one is in the central nervous system. So these are the four that are found in the central nervous. I mean, that means spinal cord and brain, and these are the peripheral nervous system. So that'd be your, your spinal nerves, your cranial nerves, and eventually the innervation of that tissue. All right, so astrocyte, large, they're numerous. They make what's called the blood-brain barrier. Actually, they don't make, they maintain the blood-brain barrier. All right, oligodendrites. What's important about this is this has an analogous structure, so to speak, in the peripheral, which is both of these produce this fatty layer called myelin, all right? And this insulates and protects, all right? And there's gaps that are, that are around the rafters called nodes of Ranvier. And we'll, you saw that in the first neuron. We'll come back to that. The myelated axons are what make up your white matter in your central nervous system. And the cell bodies in the central nervous system are unmyelated, and they make up what's called the gray body, uh, gray matter. Okay. So let's look at microglia. Um, this is a, unfortunately one of the cells that goes through uncontrolled mitosis and causes a lot um, brain, some very deadly brain tumors. All right, um, these cells are protection. All right, and then let's go to epididymal cells. Epididymal are a thin layer. They're they're endothelial, so it's epi, it's going to be an epithelial tissue, and they help circulate the cerebral spinal fluid, which is this is kind of like the blood of the nervous system. It's, it's this fluid that helps protect and nourish. And um, this short little tidbit about cerebral spinal fluid, I'm going to come back to that um, later on because we're going to, we want to talk about where it's produced and where it's circulated in these parts of the brain called, uh, and these are areas of the brain we'll get into the when we talk about the functional anatomy. All right, so this is just another picture that wraps this up. There's your epididymal cells. There's your so here's a neuron surrounded, and you know here's a microglial cell that's kind of glue. You see the um, astrocyte. See this astrocyte is connecting these two due to a capillary. There's a you know there's a blood vessel. Your brain is highly vascularized. All right there's there's the oligodendrite. Um, the satellite sites cells, which I didn't really show. Uh, these two right here. All right so you see. The satellite cell wraps up around the cell body of a unipolar or, um, or neuron, and then the swan cells are the, right here. Right? These swan cells, they cover the axon and the, with, with a myelin layer. Okay, so 
that's kind of quick. I'll go over that in greater detail in class. Now, I want to wrap up with these because this video is taking a little long, but we're almost there. Um, the swan cells and the, and the satellite cells, which we just talked about, I should have, um, swan cells, they cover all the axons in the peripheral nervous system. So the, the analogous structure, so to speak, would be oligodendrite in the CNS. This is the one that makes myelin for the PNS. Okay. Now, just a quick little thing. Think about it like this. You've got your neurons and your glia cells. Your neurons conduct action potentials. All right, they are arranged in nerves, in tracks. We'll get into that. Um, they're bundled together. They don't conduct action potentials. Well, the glia cells, the support cell, they they support nourish the neurons. So, call these are the. This is the, probably the best thing to think about, is that they're support, versus these are the ones that actually are part of the interaction and the stimulus and the response. Okay. All right. So pretty much. We've gone through this part of the video, and um, I'm at like the 16-minute part, but I want to basically mention this. All right, what exactly is the difference between a tract and a nerve? And I, I think I want to do this really quickly. So, all right, so when we said gray matter does not have myelin. White matter has myelin. So go back to the oligodendrite and the swan cells. But we have these areas where we have, so we've got a receptor here, and you're going to see these columns in the spinal cord or, all right, and tracks in the CNS, in, in the cerebral, uh, central nervous system. All right, so what exactly are Bundles of axons, and you have bundles of neurons, or cell bodies, all right? So the cell bodies, they what that happens is they collect them, and these clusters form these areas where you bundle together the, the tissue. So no neuron is acting by itself. They're always going to be interacting. So the biggest thing is the names. You've got the ganglion, the nerve, nuclei, and tracks are ones I want to focus on as we close this video. So if you look over here, the central tracks connect the brain with the other organs, organs, the systems in the body. So ascending is a sensory pathway. So this is sensory going up, and then over here, which is marked in uh, purple, is descending. That's your motor. So we're still learning this sensory, this motor, sensory, motor, <laughs> sensory, motor. Motor. Okay, it sounded like I said something else, which I'm not going to repeat. All right, I need to finish this up, so let's do this. In your peripheral nervous system, this nerve cell bodies are collected in this thing called a ganglia or a ganglion. What we do is the axons are collected together in a portion called nerves. And that's what a nerve is. So we're in the peripheral nervous system, right? And th this, inc this includes the spinal nerves, the cranial nerves, and there's going to be both bundles of sensory and motor components. So just to kind of look at this, we, this what makes up um, the cell bodies or centers, they're called nuclei, all right? And then the central nervous, you bundle together the axons. Axons are called tracks. Spinal cord, the axons are called columns. And then these pathways, they're bundled. So you're going to have some, you're going to have um, sensory and nervous. And then the ganglion here are basically the cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. So that's why I have this chart. So just take a second. The axons are bundled together in tracks in the, in the cerebral, in the central nervous system. In the peripheral, they're called nerves, all right? And that's why, and we're going to learn about the spinal and the cranial nerves. The cell bodies are called nuclei inside the central nervous system. But in the, in the peripheral, they're called ganglion, all right? All right, so that's kind of, we're going to keep coming back to this. We're going to obviously need to go into greater detail though, as we start looking at different areas of the, of the different nerves. So brought to you by Curious Marineland. All right, I know this video has been long, but thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, come to class. If you're not my student, feel free to email me.